Hello, welcome to Dungeon Trollers Podcast. I'm your host Justin. Today we have our another weekly mecha anime review. Th- uh, this week we're reviewing Gun Parade March, which came out winter t- uh, 2003. The DVD was released by Maiden Jump, which not a huge fan of Maiden Jump. Though one of the trailers for the sh- uh, that they showed off in this um, DVD set. Uh, it does look interesting, but I totally forgot what the fuck, uh, what the fuck it was called. I'll just pop it in later. So the the show's uh, original stories by Sony Interactive Entertainment. It's based off some kind of video game. Art uh, looks like it's like part visual novel, part RPG, from what I've seen of it. Original character designs by Junko Kimura. Seri- serial composition by Fumohiko Takayama. Uh, character. Design Yasuhiro Irei, Me- mechanical design. But what they mean by original character design and character design is original is from the source. Character design is for the show. So like somebody adapted the character, somebody who worked for the studio adapted the character design from the source, which is the source would have been a video game, right? You got mechanical design by Kazuniro, uh, sorry Kazunori. Awakakura, sound designer Masa, Masafumi Mia, music by Kenji Kawai, animation production JC Staff, uh, director Katsushi Sakurabai. Right? So, this TV ser- series is 12 episodes uh, long. It genre is mecha, war drama, science fiction, and high school romance. Oy vey. Uh, so the story for this uh, show is, in 1945, following the end of World War II, an, an invasion by the alien race known as the Phantom Beasts, or the Genju, uh, united humanity against a common enemy. Now, more than 50 years later, and after countless de- deaths, it's up to the teenagers of Unit 5121 to master the advanced combat mecha known as Humanoid Walking tanks or HWTs and fight off the Earth's would-be oppressors. In a future not far removed from our own, each day is a struggle for survival in the seamlessly endless war that is Gun Parade March, which the series um, takes uh, takes place in uh, 1999 and like the last episode is the New Year's, right? So my thoughts on this show... Hey, <laughs> here's the thing. The show, the show starts off pretty edgy, where like you see um, our, our characters go on a mission, and their flight carrier uh, gets destroyed, and you see like a a kid and a girl get uh, get killed, right? So after that, it just start it. It starts off pretty edgy, right? And then it goes into your uh, general high school drama bullshit, where like you have the, you have these uh, classes in this high school called combat classes, where the the students of this combat class are, you know, some of them are pilots, some of them are um, engineers, stuff like that, and they're forced to fight the Genju, right? Which are pretty, are kind of cool aliens. They're, they kind of reminded me of the aliens from Starship Troopers, where like they have there's there's the drones and then there's um, the brain, right? Which is usually a giant version of the Genju, right? Which I couldn't find any pics online of the Genju themselves for some fucking reason. Uh, it it was mostly pics of the characters, right? Probably because this is like a high school romance series. Uh, with some mecha elements and people are more focused on the fucking high school romance shit, right? Um, and they have these special weapons where, um, they have these bombs that have to be primed by genetically engineered children who, because they're genetically engineered, they, they stay at the age of eight and they mentally, they don't progress, right? Um, why the, the kids... Uh, need need to uh, prime the weapons. I they, they they never 
like explain it in detail but it's like yeah it's one of the most effective bombs to kill the genju or the brain which the um which the weapon itself it's like this black hole bomb <laughs> right that's basically the best way to describe the i think it's called a pmp uh p uh p m uh e or something like that right and uh, the humanoid walking tanks are basically armed with uh, machine guns and swords, and they're they're um, they're like kind of equipped with uh, artificial muscles, so they don't need thrusters to jump. They can just jump using the strength of their artificial muscles, right? Which are how they could have had had like advanced like weaponry like this. It, uh, who knows, right? Especially since, like, you've been in constant war with this alien race, who also reminds me of the aliens from All You Need Is Kill, because they, they harm the environment, right? They produce, like, a poison gas, right? They're like, once they're killed, you kill the brain, then the poison gas levels go down. So, like, there's a point in that, there's a really cool episode where two of our pilots which are obviously a boy and girl, right, uh, are stranded behind enemy lines, and they're, like, um, their war dresses, which, which they call their suits that they have to wear, are, are equipped with, like, um, um, respirators, and then they have, like, the whole drama of, like, oh, we don't have enough respi respirators to last the entire night. We need to get help, right? Which, that was a uh, cool survival episode, right? Um, my, my problem with this series is the show, instead of being fo focused on the war drama, it's more focused on, hey, will this, our main character get to hook up with the new exchange student who, who is a member of, uh, of this prestige family that, that creates the modern weapons that, that the army uses today, right? And she has uh, this whole backstory where she, even though she could, she could have um, uh, avoided the draft. She she joined she joined uh, willingly because you know her her boyfriend, like our character that uh, she was in love with, uh, died, right? And that character, it it is kind of implied that that character was a member of. Uh, fifth, what was it called? Unit 5121? Yeah, because like they had this character, they had they had this team member that died, and they show it in a flashback, right? And like the main character takes care of his cat, right? Because they were teammates, right? Um, yeah, I'm just gonna go to the pros and cons. So pro pros, cool mecha design, decent character and mecha uh, monster design, overall overall likable cast. Uh, the world mythos I thought was cool. You got three Christmas episodes, which was, you know, you're lucky if there's one holiday episode, but there's like four holiday episodes. And you got, you got, um, there are characters that die in this show, but they're basically, t there's only like two character deaths, and one of them was a character that we, we weren't even like introduced to, right? Well, not, uh, maybe four if you count the the kid and the the girl that died in the first episode but like it seemed like nobody knew her like knew those people our team didn't know those people those those characters were part of a different team which that's one thing i the how how that air aircraft carrier was taken out is because the genju possessed this like helicopter pilot and forced him to destroy uh the flight carrier but like that that only happens once in the show it doesn't happen a second time right so that uh, that that was very fucking weird it only happened like the first episode cons you have a fucking very awful english dub for this show i mean it is fucking awful did, did uh did it even come with the yeah um it does come with the dvd i have it does come with uh a japanese dub so you might what you depending on like your tolerance for the really shitty fucking english dub right you might you might want to watch this uh sub 
So, uh, not enough action. The la- the last two episodes is like a New Year's Eve, uh, uh, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day episode, and the- it's about like the how uh, like the main character hit like hit a wall with his relationship with the girl, and is it- the whole drama is is he going to be able to fix it right and confess his love to this girl who obviously loves him back, and it's like Jesus fucking Christ, dude, and they're. And uh, he does possess, uh, sorry, um, confesses her lo- his love to the girl, and he gets caught on TV. And all the other characters who went home to spend time w- with their families during the holidays catch it on TV, right? Um, what was that? Uh, too much romance. The finale is a New Year's episode with no action. Like the fa- the finale for this show has no action. That's one of my fucking dislikes. The team only has two infantrymen. So, like, the team has, like... Well, at, at first it had four HWTs. Uh, but one of them gets killed. And they get a special... Uh, new HWT, which is called the Samurai... Uh, Spirit of Samurai Tandem model. Which is just a red version of the HWTs with, a uh, With a missile pack, right? Which, uh, they need... It needs, like, a second pilot to uh to um be like the trigger man for the missiles which is um the 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 new girl who joins the team become uh becomes the trigger man and our main character pilots the robot right so like the team only has two infantry men this is the only show i and like the two infantry men they do a good job fighting right but there's like this is the only show i ever heard of where you, they have more mechas than they have infantry men. Usually, you would want to have like a, like, like a, like more than one, more than one squad of infantry men to accompany your mechs. But they only have two guys. It's like, what the fuck is that? Such bullshit. And the animation I thought was kind of weak at times, but overall, I thought it was okay. I was surprised to find out this was a 2003. Uh, anime series, but I guess w- with the way the animation was, it kind of made sense because, like, you know, animation kind of went, in my opinion, after the l- l- late 90s, animation kind of uh, got static and kind of not as good. You know, I think it's because they they relied more on digitally, so it's like uh, digital animation, right? So, like, that's why, like, you know, it's not as cool as it was from the late 90s, which is like. Uh, if you want to know an uh, example of that, watch the first season of Project Arms, and then watch the second season. <laughs> the second season, they went digital animation, and it just... Not CGI, but like... The, CGI, right? But like, uh, digital animation, and it looks... It looks way sh- fucking shittier. And there's even... And despite the fact that it's... They went with digital animation... I guess because it's a new technique or whatever, there's like a shitload of fucking filler episodes <laughs> when you didn't have any filler episodes when they were hand drawing everything <laughs> in the fucking first fucking season. Oh my god, Project Arms is still a great show even if it does end with a fucking like filler episode. <laughs> like a not filler, uh, recap episode, right? That's what I meant. Not filler episodes, recap episodes. Right, yeah. Like, if I were to give this show a rating, uh, it's a 5.5 out of 10. I, I, I did think I did like the show, but it's the thing where this show is more for people who are fans of Macross and Robotech and who like I like a good like who lo- like a good amount of romance in their mecha shows, which I don't fucking want that shit at all. <laughs> I'm more a fan of the Gundam style of of uh mecha series where it's a fucking war drama and ev- everything else is like you know ha- has its time and place but it's like most of the show is the romance stuff and yeah there's like there's not a lot like after like halfway through the show there's not a lot of episodes where you see our characters fight it it it, it fucking sucks if it wasn't for the fact that i actually do like these these characters i would have fucking given this show a four four out of ten or like a five out of ten but like you know because the character 
characters are likable and I did like the mecha design and it's not CGI I'm giving it a 5.5 out of 10 um, so next week we're going to review Avon not sorry not Avon <laughs> Kelly uh, uh, Escafonye or Vision of Escafonye and I also have the movie so maybe after I'm done reviewing the TV show I'll review the movie as well and we're going to continue reviewing um, the the Gundam Zeta compilation movies. All right, peace.